It is absolutely glorious. We are now in the most beautiful mountain in Africa, Kilimanjaro. Yeah. You're standing at one of the highest places on the planet. This is what Zeus would have seen. It's just an incredibly arresting and shocking and compelling thing. But the storied snows of Kilimanjaro, they just aren't there like they used to be. The glaciers are disappearing. The change is impossible to deny. It's wrenching. Kilimanjaro is one of the absolute iconic peaks on the planet. It is the highest freestanding mountain in the world, meaning it's not part of a chain, it's just a volcano. It rises out of equatorial Africa to 19,300 feet. It's one of these really, really prized mountains that people like me from all over the world eventually want to climb. The government of Tanzania requires you to hire guides and porters. This is a huge source of foreign currency for a country that has one of the lowest GDPs in the world. We're able to find a company formed by a former porter and run by Tanzanians, and that was important to us. It is without question, the porters on Kilimanjaro are the hardest working people I've ever seen in my life. They are given the task of carrying these huge bags and these huge loads up a 19,000 foot mountain. It's just grueling, grueling work. I've been a guide for 17 years now. Yeah. How many times have you reached the summit? Uh, actually, I have been there more than 300 times. I was asking our porters whether they thought that there was colonialism in what's going on here, because let's face it, these are all white tourists flying in to, to have their bags carried by Africans. This is their job. They are happy to do this. They should erase this idea of thinking that if they come, they are enslaving us, like in the past. It's a job like other job. So please, would like them to come. One of the, the big draws of going to Kilimanjaro is the fact that you start in a rainforest and you end up, when it is covered with snow, the climactic equivalent of the South Pole. Being there, it's just the most visceral, undeniable evidence of what's happening to this planet that I have personally ever seen. Well, it's the morning of day one. We're at about 9,000 feet. We came up through the rainforest yesterday. It was beautiful. I mean, it was, you know, really pretty lush, although not nearly as lush as it has been in years past. According to our guides, they're really concerned about climate change, and I don't blame them. Really well. How are you? I'm being good. So the second day's hike is over. It was the first one that really felt like a hike. One kind of disturbing thing that happened is this is known as Shira One. It's a well-known campsite for people climbing the mountain. And there's a river that runs just back behind this little flat meadow, which is why you camp here. The most important thing in choosing a campsite is a water source. But when we got here today, the river was dry. And there's a secondary tributary that comes into that river, but that was dry too. Today we struggled a lot when we used to come here, the river is full of water, but now because of the global warming, uh, it is completely dry. Our guide sent the porters to walk another hour and a half uh, to bring back water in sloshing buckets. We are getting worried about in the future that there will be no uh, glaciers or ice on the top. And they think about the challenge we are facing now, we don't have water. The thing that you cannot avoid or deny is that the planet is changing and the people who, who live there are forced to confront the change that we're all going to have to confront. They're confronting it sooner.
All right, one step at a time. We spent eight days on the mountain. And most of that is sort of going up slowly so that you can acclimatize along the way. Probably the hardest point along the week was summit day. We got up at 11 p.m. and started up, and it, you know, you're going up 4,000 feet. It's 4,000 feet higher than I had ever been. We were standing up there, it's like 18,800 feet, and suddenly we're going from being frozen to being bathed in the most gloriously warm, comforting, flattering light. Our guides had timed it absolutely perfectly. This is a place to be. It is so gorgeous here. It is so beautiful. So yeah. But there was still one last hill to climb to get to the true summit, Uhuru Peak. We finally did it. The sense of satisfaction is absolutely overwhelming. It is almost impossible to describe how hard summit day is on Mount Kilimanjaro. <laughs> I got emotional, so did my climbing partner. But it was also bittersweet. That's because my childhood image of Kilimanjaro, that is gone. It's just desolate and dusty. And there are little fragments of glaciers there but they're just sad and lonely, like little icebergs in a sea of dust. That hit hard. The fact that the glaciers are disappearing on the top of Kilimanjaro is undeniable. They've lost 90% uh, of their ice since the end of the 1800s. And unless the weather pattern changes to dump a whole lot more snow on that mountain very soon, those glaciers will be gone. Honestly, like, why does Kilimanjaro matter more than everywhere else in the planet that's suffering? It doesn't, but it is so symbolic, and it is so iconic, especially if you're into mountains. And the change is, it's wrenching. <laughs> <laughs>